Hello, happy hump day. Welcome to day three. Day three of creating strength, health, and vitality on your body's own terms. So I hope you are um, enjoying the videos and I hope that you're digging in deep to um, see what all of this information, how you can apply it, how you can integrate it so that, um, so that you can make those positive changes in your life. Um, today is definitely going to be my favorite day, but I want to just recap what we've done up until now. So, um, to recap the, the building blocks to creating health, strength, and vitality on your body's own terms on day one, uh, it was about understanding that there is nothing wrong with you. And that typically the systems that have um, been set up and put in place to uh, encourage a diet mentality and fitness propaganda from the diet and fitness industry are not set up or created to see you have sustainable success. So, you know, you might get a little nibble, you might have some success um, for a, a given amount of time, but then typically what starts to happen is that the programs are either too expensive or they're very, very restrictive or they're just, they don't have elements worked into them that are going to be sustainable, which means that you can continue to do it forever if it works for you. Um, so in order to really tap into what is going to work for you? You first need to discover what, how you want to feel and what you want, what you desire. And then you need to know why you desire that, why that is important to you, why that's something that you want to feel in your life in respect, with respect to your body, because it acts as an anchor so that you can do the things that you need to do to get to where it is that you want to go. And then the third part of that is to be able to um, to set the goals. So create the create the desire or or know that how you want to feel. Know the why as to why you want to feel the way you want to feel, and then starting to create goals around how you can feel that way now. Okay. And then the next thing was to look into the deep grooves of your consciousness and to discover what thoughts that you have been continuing to think over and over again that are creating belief systems. Hi, Rachel. That are creating belief systems around, um, around your success or what is going to um, create success for you. So explore your thoughts around what it takes for you to succeed and the belief systems that are around that. Um, if they're not supportive, then you need to start to do some things that, to make some changes, start to do, implement some things that are going to see you succeed. So small successes so that you can interrupt those neural pathways that continue to tell you over and over you're, that I'm not motivated, I am not successful, this isn't something that's going to work for me, I'm lazy, whatever it is, whatever the thought that you have been thinking over and over again is, being able to interrupt the thought process will help you to start to change those belief systems. Um, day two, yesterday, we talked about a new metric of ease or a new definition of ease and determining what it feels like to have ease in the body. Knowing that many of the gimmicks and the fast fixes and the empty promises don't actually create ease in the body. They tell you that it's an easy way to get to where you want to be, whether it's losing inches or you know, losing pounds, whatever it is, they tell you that their system is an easy system to use, but it's not easy on the body. And so when you're able to come up with a different definition of ease, um, then you are able to also break thought patterns around, around what it means or what you need to do in order to get to where you wanna go. So today, today is eating for health, strength, and vitality. And this is by far my favorite part. 
there cannot be a more confusing um, piece of the wellness industry or the or the or the fitness industry or the diet industry, however you want to look at it, than what happens around food. Okay, so um, this is my very favorite topic and the one that I'm most passionate about. Um, it's about discovering what is going to work for you in your body and you get to experience that firsthand because you experience it from the inside out. And so when you start to change your ideas and your process around food and how you eat and what you think about the food that you eat and what you eat and all of those kinds of things, then you will, you'll feel it from the inside out. It is a shift unlike any other, okay? So there is a, there's a old saying or whatever, a line, a joke, whatever, you are what you eat. And you know, it, it can be taken so many different ways, but I think that the important thing to realize is that um, when you eat pretend food, which is what a lot of our food is, then you become a pretend human being, right? It's like you can't even recognize yourself anymore. Hey Sherry, welcome. So I know it's super confusing, right? So for a very long time, we were you know, not supposed to eat fat. So eat low fat, and then now it's don't eat low fat. And then it was make sure that you are eating sugar free, and then it's don't eat sugar free. And then make sure you're getting seven servings of grains a day. And then it's eat gluten free. It's enough to make you want to pull your hair out, to go to the grocery store hungry, and to buy everything in sight. But this is where it becomes really important, in my opinion, to tap into the wisdom of your body and to connect to it and to do a little bit of a research on the real food movement, and as well as the idea that food is medicine. So one of my biggest pet peeves is that we create so much doubt within ourselves about our own knowledge, and especially about our own knowledge when it comes to our bodies. And then we look towards those that we feel should know better than us. We trust others to know more about our bodies and our own selves. And you know, I've lived in this meat suit for 43 years, so I should know what feels right in my body. So a very important piece is missing when we blanket everyone with a one size fits all approach to how we eat. And that's what happens in so many diet systems, okay? It's this is what's going to work for everybody. And it, the, the, the truth of the matter is, is that it isn't because everybody and everybody is different. I have a story from, um, from a client uh, who had been recently diagnosed uh, celiac. And so she went to see the dietitian and the dietitian encouraged her to make sure that she was eating her grains and also making sure that her dairy intake was um, up to what the Canada Food Guide said. Now, she's celiac, so she shouldn't be eating any grains. And also when people are first um, diagnosed with celiac disease, often they are encouraged to eliminate dairy from their diet as well while they transition into a gluten-free diet. But the thing is, is that because those systems are such blanket systems and are supposed to work for the masses, then, you know, there isn't the individual pieces missing. And that's, that's your job. That's your job to become very connected with your body so that you know what works for you. So let's have a little chat about calories. I also have clients who can rattle off the calorie content of every food with the mathematical genius of Rain Man. I swear to God, it is crazy 
how they can remember how many calories all of these foods have. But that's also a thought process that we need to change. Because food is more than calories. Food is actually information for your body. And to put that into a little bit of perspective, if you think about what it looks like to eat 1,500 calories of Pepsi or 1,500 calories of broccoli, you know, like as soon as you start to put it into those kinds of perspectives, you can see that it actually, I mean, your, the calorie content, I mean, you would have to eat truckloads of broccoli to eat 1,500 calories of broccoli, right? And so it's really important to understand that the, that, that the caloric intake is only part of the equation. And that is also what diet systems like point counting or shake supplements or those kinds of things don't take into consideration because they are lowering your caloric intake, but quite often not heavy on the idea of what the information is that the food is bringing into your body so that you can function and all your systems can function to their optimum potential. I remember my mom being on a banana split diet, right? Like eat nothing all day and then eat a big banana split at the end of the day. So talk about, you know, fatigue and brain fog, you know, those kinds of things like sugar rush. So if we talk about what real food is, because I said, do a little bit of research into the real food movement, what is real food? So even as short as 10 years ago, when I started, um, as a personal trainer and, and opening the facility, opening the gym, I used to say to my clients, I want you to eat things that grew in the ground or had a mother. If they didn't grow in the ground and they didn't have a mother, then don't eat them. But it isn't as easy as that anymore. Because of the industrialization of our food systems, we, and, the need, and the need to grow bigger and better and have more yield, we have actually done that at the expense of the quality of the food that we have available to us. So the crops today are genetically different than they were before, and our bodies can't recognize that. So, Back in the, in, you know, in the day, long, long ago, the human population suffered from things like infectious diseases, mostly because, you know, I mean, we didn't have the, the cleanliness that we have now, right? We didn't have, you know, running water, people, you know, dump sewage in the streets, um, you know, they didn't, they didn't have refrigeration, so, you know, they were getting sick from contamination from meat or, or bacteria or whatever, and so we had this huge insurge of infectious disease. But what's happening now is that with the industrialization of our food systems, we are seeing chronic diseases become more prevalent in our society. Things like obesity, things like autoimmune disorders, things like skin disorders. Um, autism also can be food related. It can be linked back to food related things. Um, you know, rheumatoid arthritis, lupus, there is a host of new issues that we are seeing as a result of the quality of our food. So this is a super hot topic, right? Um, because, you know, there's, there's Monsanto and there's the GMO and there's the farmers and there's that, you know, so it is a super hot topic and I, you know, I would encourage you to do a little bit of research on your own on it so you can make your own informed opinion. But, um, you know, I, I, I think that, you know, we're seeing rise even in, in things like, um, celiac disease and gluten sensitivities and those kinds of things. And, you know, I, I don't think it's not a direct result of the things that we're putting onto our crops. Again, hot topic. So let's talk a little bit more about you and what this looks like for you. We blindly eat, if we're given a diet plan, we blindly eat what's on the diet plan, right? Um, and it really takes us out of our body. So it takes us out of our body 
It gives the um, power to somebody outside of us to tell us what we should or shouldn't be eating. Um, but I want you to stop and think about what your body is asking for. Now I know this can be super scary because it might feel like if I'm given free reign to consume what my body's asking for, I know my body's gonna be like on some sugar binge, looking for the chocolate chips in the bottom of the cupboard, you know, dipping my Twinkies and Slurpee, whatever, right? Um, but that's one of those old belief systems that I talked about even, you know, on, on, um, on, the, on day one, that you don't know how to self-regulate for yourself and you do it's just that we are so disconnected to our physical bodies whether it's because we dislike our physical body whether it's been you know we're told that there's something wrong with our physical body or that we're not able to do it and it's all those old thought processes that continue to pile on and tell you that you don't know what you're doing so it really is about starting to trust your body and the message messages that it has for you so how do you do this? You search out clean, real, whole, live foods and how to source them, right? Like where can you get those things? Where can you get the real food? You pay attention to how you feel after you eat something, right? Um, start to notice things like bloat and headaches and rashes and, 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 and joint pain and brain fog. Lots of times we have things like um, respiratory things. So for me, if I eat gluten, I'm heavy on the respiratory. I can feel it. I can feel myself get stuffy and I feel my joints hurt when I eat it. And so that has come as a result of taking the time to really um, pay attention to those to those messages that my body's giving me. Um, things even like hot flashes, right? Like as you get older and you um, and you know paying attention to to the food that you're eating, you, th that sometimes is a symptom of something that's not sitting right with your body. So your work for today, or for this day three, is to take that moment. And to think about whether or not you have any of those food reactions. And you do this by getting really quiet and asking the body, right? If anything that you are experiencing, any disease, dis-ease in the body is a direct result of anything that you might be eating or, or bringing into your body. So this is a real, this is a practice. So you know the first few times you might be like, this is ridiculous, like my body is not talking to me like that. But it is, I promise you it is. If you have any kind of, um, out of, you know, support for your body. So anything that kind of is out of support or out of um, optimum, presence and feeling and, and, and function for the body, then there is something that isn't right. So even things like if, you, if overweight, if you're being, if you're overweight, those are reactions to foods that you're, that you're eating. It just is because your body's, you know, perfect sort of equilibrium and balance is to be where you need to be f for you, but also feeling fantastic, right? So I want you to journal your findings on that. So sit quiet with the body, discover if there's anything, ask it if there's anything that you know you're eating. And, and you know, you know when you're like, this is not sitting well with me. So write those things down. And also write down, you know, what your symptoms of those are. So, you know, I eat the gluten, I feel extremely um, stuffy or, I eat the gluten and I have sore joints, or I eat the sugar and I get a headache, or you know I have chicken skin on the backs of my arms. That's often sugar or gluten, you know, or dairy also. Um, so just start to start to become aware of of those symptoms and those symptomatic findings. 
And then tomorrow, I'm going to tell you, we're going to talk about what it looks like for you to be able, or how you do that, how you really dive deep into discovering what foods work well for you. And so that you can, you can have that optimum strength, vitality, and health in your body and on your terms. So that's all I have tonight. Do either of you have um, any questions about any of the days? It can be about any of the stuff or any comments. I think it's really important to also note that I think you can think of your body, your physical body as a vehicle. And so, you know, if you're putting in diesel fuel into a gasoline vehicle, right, it's not going to run and operate well. And so you need to know what either what your diesel is or what your like high quality gasoline is. I mean, if you think about it that way, right, it, it helps to, um, it helps to sort of put that connection between what it means to be really fueling your body to its optimum potential. Thank you. Thank you, Rachel. It's been a, you know, it, this is a journey. This is, this is definitely a journey, you know? Like, I have experience with all kinds of diet systems and, you know, things over the years, right? Different practices and whatever. But I have definitely found that this, this change in thought process, this um, change in um, connection to body, this understanding that, you know, I am able to make decisions for my body based on what my body feels like. This is the most sustainable practice that there is. And you can carry it through your whole entire life. That's the thing. I'm never going to have to rely on something that I, you know, other than something that is just so very um, practical and sustainable in order to continue to feel health and strength and vitality in my body. And that's what I want for you. Absolutely, Sherry. Sherry says, I'm realizing that the older that I get, the more that I need real food. And that is so true. And imagine what that would have felt like to know that at a younger age, right? My kids tease me about, oh my goodness, I think it was, I don't even know how, how many years ago it was. And it would have been, you know, starting to get, I think it was probably in the Weight Watchers days, because I think there was a, a Weight Watchers cookbook where I had um, made um, uh, couscous, lemon couscous, and some kind of eggplant dish. Anyways, it didn't turn out. It was terrible. And they still talk about it, so you know that it was that bad, because it's like 15 years later or more. Um, but they laugh because they said that I made them craft dinner and, and how I would never do that now, right? Like y'all would just be like, eat the couscous, right? But, I mean, probably not even couscous because it's a grain. Anyway, um, right? But it's, it, that doesn't work for my body. And, it, and, and, and when you know, when you, when you can figure it out, oh, I wish we could just figure it out sooner. And I think the thing is, is that you don't, another, another big piece of this is if you haven't, stepped into the real food and food is medicine mentality. Um, you don't know how bad you feel until you know how good you can feel. And, you know, I hope that that's a magnet to draw people in, right? Like I can feel amazing. And that's, I think that, I mean, that's, that's the goal, right? The primary intention is to feel good. Always. The primary intention is to feel good in this physical body. It does most definitely work. Rachel, you're right. It does. It absolutely does. Cool. All right, ladies. If you don't have anything else for me, oh, there we go, Sherry, I want to read this. Um, I remember as a kid, my mom only made real food. Everything was the garden and wild fruits. Yeah, like berries and nuts. I'm really loving the whole, I know, 
I miss them too. That's why I love to grow my garden, right? And this year we've been doing a lot of things like, um, so like rewilding. So going out and, you know, um, right now, because here's the other thing that I think is also very important and, and I'll get into it a little bit more tomorrow as well. But, um, you know, as, as important as what we put in our bodies is, is, is what we put on our bodies and around in our, in our, in our atmosphere, in our homes. Right. And so we've been doing this whole rewilding thing and going out and looking for like berries and, um, you know, making some like bath stuff with like flowers and, um, housekeeping stuff out of like, uh, spruce tips and, um, and, and pine boughs and, you know, citrus rinds and stuff like that, because I think that it's super important, right? And, and, and you're right. Like when everything is just the, there's this, um, there's this, I can't remember. I think it was like Louis CK or whatever his name is. I don't know, some comedian, but, um, he was talking about, uh, people needing, um, oh, money. So God's talking to this man and he's like, you know, I hate my job and I don't want to do this. Well, you know, why do you have to have a job? Well, I need to buy things. Well, what do you need to buy? Well, I need to buy food. I need to put food on my table. And he's like, what do you need food for? Why don't you just eat the shit I left on the ground? <laughs> right? And it's so true. We have this huge world around us. And I mean, I think we have to be really, really careful about, um, about how like the industrialization of our food systems and definitely the things that we're putting into our bodies. We're seeing far too many weird and, um, you know, chronic, like I said, chronic diseases that, um, it's really important to take control of our own health and well being. That is, is so important. And there's such empowerment in that. That's the thing. If you can, 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 you know, be creating this vessel that, you know, that, 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 that feels really good and it's all on your own terms and you know it, you know it inside and out and you know what it needs, whether it's inside or outside or whatever. Um, there's huge empowerment in that. Mm -hmm. Cool. All right, guys. Thank you. Thank you for joining me tonight. This video will go up in the email. Are you sure you're getting emails? And Rachel, did you get yours figured out? Absolutely. I love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. You guys are all getting the emails. Um, let me know. You can private message me too if you're not getting them. And I'll make sure that they are coming to you. And uh, yeah, so uh, tomorrow's the last day and um, I'll talk a little bit more about what it looks like to get deeper into that. Thank you. Thank you for joining me. All right. Have a great night, you guys. Bye-bye.